you for watching this episode of Texas Flashbacks. If you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe and share this video. October 27th of 1982, the weather was beautiful in Carrollton, Texas. The temperature was a perfect 72 degrees. In 1982, the neighborhoods in this area were booming with new construction of homes, businesses, and apartment complexes. Local students of Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District were anxiously awaiting trick-or-treating in just a few days. Some two major things happened on October 27th and October 28th. So after you see what happens on October 27th, please watch the end of the video so you can see what happened the very next day. These are the three airports that were in very close vicinity of Carrollton. First, let's go to the Addison Airport. This is the smallest of the three airports. This airport has only one runway and it has 119,065 aircraft operations per year. This averages to be 326 departures and arrival per day. The second in size is the Love Field Airport. Today, it is the 31st busiest airport in the United States. Love Field serves an average of nine million passengers per year. This airport averages 500 commercial flights arriving and departing daily. DFW Airport. It's better known as the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. This airport has over 1,800 flights per day, which is equivalent to be more than 189,000 customers traveling through this airport each day. DFW Airport covers 17,207 acres. DFW is larger than the island of Manhattan and is the second largest airport by land area in the United States. And minutes before 1120 a.m., students attending Dale B. Davis Elementary School on East Peters Colony and Josie Lane were heading to lunch and recess, while students that attended the nearby Newman Smith High School were doing about the same. When the crash occurred at 1120 a.m., approaching Dallas Left Field Airport, a sky map was taking off from nearby Addison Airport. The two suddenly collided in the air over Carrollton. The Piper Navajo from Louisiana contacted the tower and was cleared to descend and land at Love Field. Just after that, the Cessna pilot called in. He was leaving Addison Airport bound for Nakona, Texas. His transmission was garbled. When the Cessna pilot said he was leaving Addison, the air traffic controller thought he said he was leaving the Arlington Airport. I looked up and they just sputtered two or three times and I looked up and he just blew up, just went up to pieces. Whenever I saw it, it just went into a ball of flame, went out and just hit the ground. That's all I saw. And the motor, the motor hit the ground over by the house and I went and put it out with the fire extinguisher. And I heard, could hear the two aircraft flying above me. And all of a sudden I heard this, this kaboom, like it, you know, like a round going off or exploding or something. And I look up and it's just a ball of fire and all these pieces coming down. And then I started hearing pieces drop in around me. And then I looked off and I saw the airplane land or crash over here. And I said, oh, God, we got to get over there. So we went over there and everything was on fire. Right over our area, the Newman Smith football field. And uh, some of it is pretty low. There was, there was a lot of fire initially, but of course it turned to ash as it came down. When it landed, there was a big explosion and the fire, of course, picked up again. By the time I, I ran up the street, the fire trucks were already here, so they responded very quickly and put the fire out. But it was very frightening. Very, very frightening. I saw pipes, parts flying over my garage and into that guy's house over there. and. Uh, so I just ran outside real quick and I saw all the flames in front of the, their yard and I saw some of it in our yard so I went back in and I called the fire department. Lonnie Kuyper lives next door to where one of the planes crashed. What happened in his own neighborhood has frightened him. Well, you know, you kind of wonder every time a plane goes over if it's going to fall, you know. Uh, you hear them going over at night and stuff. Well, this woman moved of, to the neighborhood three months ago here? but now wants to move. I'm going back to Montana. <laughs> I don't like the plains, and I don't like living right where they're going to come down. The wreckage has already been removed here. The fire was put out yesterday. But it will be a long time until people here put that sight out of their minds. Kevin Berger, Channel 5 Action News, Carrollton. Today's crash is a grim reminder of something the professional air traffic controllers warned of three years ago. This area is vulnerable to a mid-air collision, and if it happens, it will happen over Carrollton. But over there in the front yard, there wasn't much left. There is another aircraft involved. It appears that they were both fixed-wing aircraft, but There's a school we're still investigating. Any of the parts of that school? 
not to our knowledge, no. There may be de debris, as you can see, the debris is widely scattered and, and uh, it will cover a large area. I think what we'll try to do is start the straight line boundary for the bridge down here. I'll try to work as far north as we can to the bridge. And we We've got body parts and plane parts scattered from uh, the Summer Creek Apartments and Peters Company in Josie to Tree Line in Josie. So we've got quite a large area to search. No, we have some debris at 1814 Hyper Hypernova was bound for Love Field out of Appaloosa, Louisiana. The Cessna 337 was based at Addison Airport. Neither plane caused any major damage to buildings, although one plane crashed close to a school. We'll never know if the last act of the pilots was to save others. Clint Bond, Channel 5 Action News, Carrollton. We have three victims. None, nothing's been identified yet. Uh, we're doing a ground search now to see if there's any more victims. It was only fate that kept anyone on the ground from being hurt, but for the passengers on the two planes, it was a violent ending. And we've got body parts and body parts scattered from uh, the Summer Creek Apartments and Peters Colony and Josie to the tree line in Josie. So we've got quite a large area to search. Be sure to work in the street line. What's left of the second plane fell in this field. But two hours after the crash was first reported, officials revised the number of victims. Right now we have two male adults and one child. We may have another child and uh, another victim. So right now as it stands, we have possibly five victims. This is the worst aircraft accident Carrollton has ever had. But reporter Bob Letter says it's not something officials haven't been concerned about. Pieces of the shredded planes are still scattered across an empty field in Carrollton. One engine up there. I guess the engine in this stuff something. This crew is trying to locate the bits and pieces that could provide some answers. The force of the crash is evident in the trail of debris. A tattered seat is found nearly a block away from where this plane finally crashed. Hey, Luggy, we got a bunch of stuff here. The plane parts will be taken to a hangar where investigators will begin piecing it together tomorrow. Hundreds of planes crisscross the skies over Carrollton every day. People living here never paid much attention to them, but they are now. Most airliners are now equipped with sophisticated collision avoidance equipment. Avionics not generally found on the two small planes that collided today. The air traffic system works most of the time, but today's crash is a harsh reminder the system is a fragile network of men and machines, and one failure can have devastating results. What concern the Air Traffic Controllers Union back in 1979 still applies. The airspace over far north Dallas, Carrollton, and Farmers Branch is shared by too many airplanes using three major airports, DFW, Love Field, and Addison. This map shows the most critical area for a mid-air. The air safety study was ignored in 1979 and discarded altogether when the union folded in 1981. The fact there haven't been more mid-air collisions is a tribute to air traffic controllers and the diligence of most pilots who daily are reminded of the dangers of mid-air collisions with posters such as this one. But those crowded skies were a source of constant fear to many Carrollton residents long before today's crash. On some days, there are as many as 5,000 takeoffs and landings. The bulk comes from just three airports, DFW, Love Field, and Addison. Even the FAA admits the triangle can be hazardous, proved tragically with the Carrollton midair. The problem is more complicated than just crowded skies. Large airplanes generate weight turbulence, an invisible miles-long deadly trail of violence wind shear that can knock a small plane out of the sky. Keeping order on the ground are air traffic controllers who keep airplanes separated by distance and altitude. But the final responsibility rests with the pilot. People in aviation admit our skies are too crowded, but say there's little that can be done outside of increased diligence. The fact remains the air safety record here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is extraordinarily good. But as long as there's a chance for human error, and there always will be, tragedies like the mid-air collision in Carrollton are bound to happen. Thursday, October 28th, this is what happened directly across the street at the Skaggs Alpha Beta on the corner of Josie and Frankfurt. A regular start by an armored car exploded in violence this morning. The Curator security guard was making a routine run at the Carrollton Skaggs Alpha Beta when the holdup men approached him. It's believed they took the money and shot the man at point blank range four or five times. 45-year-old Billy Perkins in oh, Dallas died about an hour after he was rushed to Parkland. 
While officers cleaned up the mess, police talked to store employees and customers. Well, I heard shots while I was in the store. I hadn't been in the store very long, and when I heard the shots, there was a girl next to me, and we looked at each other and ran out the side of the, the building there. We had a, an exit door. The robbers drove their getaway car to the back of the store, abandoned it, and drove away in a waiting white pickup. Police describe the suspects as two white men in their late teens or early 20s. One is blonde, the other brunette. Both wear beards. Their actions left people who witnessed the violence shaken. I could hardly write my check out for my groceries. <laughs> Store officials won't say how much the thieves got away with. Kevin Berger, Channel 5 Action News, Carrollton.